everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I got an email from Eliza C. Subject line, another one. And in the email, hi, Jared, you may have this article, but in case you haven't, I found this article about yet another sign in the heavens, another comet. I appreciate your channel and the work, love, and enthusiasm you share as you learn and study the scriptures and words of our prophets for these latter days. Kind regards, a lily bee. Well, thank you, Eliza. I'm glad that you enjoyed the channel. And I also want to say thank you to Joni from Joyous Genealogist channel because she also sent me a message about this. And uh, by the way, she's one of the first ones that I interviewed on the channel. So make sure to subscribe to her. I'll put the link for her channel in the description box below. But uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at this comet that's coming later this year. Uh, before we do, I think it's it's important to review why comets in particular um, are something that we should probably pay attention to. And it comes down to this. I'm on my spreadsheet called quotes A through Z, uh, row 332 for a sign of the Son of Man. Uh, just keep in mind, the link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of each video. So you can access this, access this anytime. So the first one, uh, this can be found on josephsmithpapers.org. Uh, this is recorded by James Burgess. And uh, if there's any misspellings or grammatical errors, it's because it was copied directly from that journal. So don't, don't get worried about that. But this is something that Joseph Smith said, okay? I'm talking about the sign of the Son of Man. Read Matthew 24th chapter in all the prophets. He says, Then shall they see the sign of the coming of the Son of Man in the clouds of heaven. How are we to see it? Answer, as the lighting up of the morning or the dawning of the morning cometh from the east and shineth unto the west. So also is the coming of the, uh, the sorry. So also is the coming of the Son of Man. The dawning of the morning makes its appearance in the east and moves along gradually. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. It will be small at its first appearance and gradually becomes larger until every eye shall see it. Shall the saints understand it? Oh yes, Paul says so. Shall the wicked understand? Oh no, they attribute it to a natural cause. They will probably suppose it is two great comets coming in contact with each other. It will be small at first and will grow larger and larger until it will be all in a blaze so that every eye shall see it. All right, so we have that account. And there's a few other ones, but I'm just going to read these two. Uh, this one, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but this is from um, a manuscript for the history of the church, also found on the Joseph Smith uh, papers.org. Okay. So he says, then will appear, I'm at the bottom here, then will appear one grand sign of the son of man in heaven. But what will the, what will the world do? They will say it is a planet, a comet, etc. But the son of man will come as the sign of the coming of the son of man, which will be as the light of the morning cometh out of the east. All right. So that's why I think when we see a comet, that's on its way to Earth or uh, on its way to the inner solar system, I think that we should pay attention to it uh, because it may, one of these days it may turn out to be the sign of the Son of Man. Uh, so, and especially if they're predicting that it's going to be visible to the, to the naked eye. Now, of course, this is based on their calculations of its trajectory and all that stuff um, along with other factors, but I think that we should pay attention to it because you never know. Okay, so... We're on BBC Sky at Night magazine. The comet highlight of the year is yet to come. Here's how to find and observe C2023 A3 Sushinshan Atlas in June. There were a number of binocular and small telescope bright comets at the start of 2024. However, the comet highlight event for the year is yet to come in the form of C2023 A3 Shushinshan Atlas, which reaches perihelion, or in other words, its closest point to the sun, on the 27th of September. Around this time, C2023 A3 is expected to brighten above the naked eye threshold. Okay, so that's interesting. Now, I was already tracking this. I have a spreadsheet called Signs, Comets, Meteors, and Asteroids. And uh, my first entry on here for this comet is uh, the 22nd of February, 2023, when it was announced. 
and uh, not much has happened since that time. You have some of these objects that uh, have like certain events that take place uh, before they come close to Earth. Uh, nothing so far with this comet, although just like the article said, uh, on September twenty September twenty seventh, uh, it's going to make its closest approach to the sun or perihelion, and then October thirteenth, it's going to make its closest approach to Earth, which just happens to de- happens to be the day after Yom Kippur. Now Yom Kippur is the holiest day on the Hebrew calendar. Uh, it's part of uh, it's one of the two high holy days, and it's part of the ten days of awe, which go from Rosh Hashanah until Yom Kippur. Okay, so this year Yom Kippur is going to be on Saturday, which is the Jewish um, Sabbath or Shabbat, and then the next day is when this comet is going to make its closest approach to Earth. And uh, I can only assume that it's going to be visible in the days leading up to this. So, essentially during the, the high holy days and the 10 days of awe, I think it should be visible. Um, what's interesting is that I've noticed that there have been other, you know, comets, meteors, asteroids that have shown up at significant times. So we're looking at column G. And let me just show you really quick what I have so far. There's probably been other, other uh, events that I'm not aware of. But the first one that I'm tracking of was on the 14th of uh, the 14th of September 2021. It was a comet called C2014 UN 271 Bernard Bernardinelli Bernstein. This was a comet that showed up um or it had an outburst of brightness that was observed. Um it was during the 10 days of awe between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. All right, so that's kind of interesting whenever something happens during that uh, that window of time. And then on September 20th, 2022, now this is really interesting. So there's like this kind of like this series of three, three sets of three asteroids that pass by the earth on significant days. So this is the first set of three, September 20th, 2022, three asteroids pass by earth and it was exactly one week before Rosh Hashanah. Then, a couple months later, there were three giant asteroids that passed by Earth, and there were three things taking place that day. Number one, it was Christmas Day. It was December 25th. Number two, in that year, it was the eighth day of Hanukkah, or the final day of lighting candles. And by the way, in addition to that, there was a planetary alignment uh, that was taking place on that day, it was a planetary octet, as though there was a menorah, uh, like a celestial menorah in the sky. So you had those three things taking place on that day. Okay. And then the next one, September 25th, 2023, uh, there were another three asteroids that passed by Earth on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And uh, the only reason why I know about these is because they made news. In fact, in this one, uh, with this one, uh, there was an article written for, this was the Jerusalem Post, and the name of the article was Judgment Day, Three Asteroids to Fly Past Earth on Yom Kippur, NASA. So this is how I found out about them. They were significant enough to where articles were written about them. Uh, The Jerusalem Post took note of this, this first set of three, three asteroids to pass Earth, uh, one to fly closer to planet than normal. And uh, and they made mention of, you know, the upcoming Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur holidays. And that's another interesting, th- interesting thing. This first set of three, there was one asteroid out of the three that, that flew particularly close to Earth. And then the one in the middle, you had the three giant asteroids on Christmas Day, eighth day of Hanukkah. And then the last set of three... It was the same thing where he had one of the asteroids that were per, that was particularly close to Earth. It's like some kind of um, mirror image, you know, with the three giant asteroids in the middle. So whatever. So make of that what you will. Okay. In that same year, on October 3rd, 2023, there was an asteroid that passed by Earth, asteroid 
349507-2008QY. And it passed by Earth on Sukkot 4, or the fourth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. All right, and that's what I have. Uh, we're going to talk about this in a, in a minute. We have um, the comet called 12 P. Pons Brooks, and it was visible if you were in the path of totality uh, during the April, the April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse. So, I don't know. You just have these things that... You have a, a number of events here that are taking place on very special days. I think that they are signs in the heavens. And so I'm excited about this one that's coming up. It's going to be the day after Yom Kippur, and it's going to be visible to the naked eye. And I hope that it's the sign of the Son of Man, but I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, now, let's talk about Pons Brooks, okay? The reason why is because uh, you'll notice here, so today... The day that I'm recording this is June 3rd, and yesterday, Pons Brooks made its closest approach to Earth. Now, I meant to make this video on Saturday, but President Nelson did his social media post uh, where he did an another seven, and he also talked about his age, and uh, I have a follow-up video for that, so stay tuned. So, I was going to put this out the day before Pons Brooks made, made its closest approach to Earth, but I'm doing it today. So, yesterday made its closest approach closest approach to Earth. And uh, this was a very interesting comet. Let me just give you a quick history. So first, you know, there were articles talking about the fact that uh, it was coming back around because it makes an orbit around the sun. And um, this one happens to have like a 70 or 71 year orbit. So uh, it was coming back in and it had this unusual shape. At first, they were calling it the Millennium Falcon Comet because it looks similar to the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. Uh, a lot of people commented like, oh, it's interesting. You know, you think about the millennium uh, that we're all waiting for after the second coming. So, you know, I, I took note of this comet. And then later, um, it started having these like outbursts or eruptions uh, because as it gets warmed up by the sun, as it gets closer... Uh, it has material inside that heats up and uh, essentially, well, I get, yeah, it, it essentially explodes. It erupts. Uh, it's in a, in a solid state. And as it comes close to the earth, uh, it experience or to the sun, it, it experiences sublimation where instead of going from solid to liquid to gas, it just goes straight from solid to gas. And so, as you might imagine, it, uh, it erupts and it's had a number of these where, uh, it's gotten pretty bright and I've, I've kept track of those. So let's see, let's go down here. Okay. July 20th of 2023 is when it had its first eruption, which made it uh, abruptly brighten by a hundredfold. And it was its first eruption since 1954. So I thought that was interesting when you have something that brightens a hundredfold. That's interesting. So you had that. And then later on, you had a second eruption, October of 2023, a third eruption later on in the month on Halloween. It's kind of interesting. And then it had its fourth eruption in November. And uh, according to th these couple articles here uh, on the right, it was its biggest blast yet. It brightened a hundredfold again. And this time... Um, it changes from, okay, it changes to a green color, loses its horns, and gets a dark gap. And I have a picture of that. So, okay, so first it looks like this. Then it has these series of eruptions. And the fourth eruption makes it look like this. It turns green. It has this dark gap. Uh, it loses its, its horns, quote unquote, so to speak. Uh, by this point, they start calling it the Devil Comet, or up until this point, uh, which, of course, I'm not a big fan of that name, and neither are many of you. So it goes through this pretty dramatic change after a series of uh, eruptions. And then after that, uh, this happens. It starts having uh, this red coloration, and uh, it develops this like spiral right here. So, it, again, it went from this to this 
to this to this. <laughs> so this is this is a pretty wild uh, comet. Um, after that, now this was news to me. Okay, as I was like researching this on Saturday, preparing for the video, uh, I guess it got a new name that I didn't know of, Mother of Dragons. And uh, that doesn't sound too good either. It's a little bit better than Devil Comet, but it's still not too good because in the scriptures usually, well, yeah, I think every single time uh, dragons or the dragon is associated with Satan. So Mother of Dragons, and I wanted to find out why that was. And it says, prior outbursts have made it appear as if the comet sported a pair of horns, likely due to a notch of ice or rock within the comet that split its frosty ejecta plume in two. The last few eruptions, however, have lacked this feature. ESA instead chose the Mother of Dragons moniker, as the comet is thought to be the parent body of the small Kappa Draconids meteor shower, which is active, which is active annually between November 29th and December 13th. So they named it after what they think is its meteor shower that it causes. And uh, you can actually see that here. This is American Meteor Society, and there's different classes of meteor showers going from major to minor to variable, and then the lowest class is called weak, class four. And uh, this is the class that the uh, Kappa Draconids is a part of, okay? So I don't know. There's a lot of things going on with like the shape and the color and the light, you know, the outbursts and uh, the name of this this comet. It's It's a very interesting comet. And this is just one of the latest things. Now it's called, they're calling it the Mother of Dragons. So if it is a significant comet, there, there's a lot of what seems to be symbolic things going on with it. Uh, I don't know how to interpret it, but it's happening. And then finally, like I mentioned before, um, I didn't see it, but it was supposed to be visible if you were in the path of totality of a, uh, the April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse. So I was at the Kirtland Temple. Uh, you could see a couple things, like here's Jupiter right here. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. I never looked into that, but, you know, here's the moon and the sun, Jupiter, whatever this is. Um, this photo was taken by Floyd Gowans, one of my subscribers. I met him. Uh, he was there at the same time to see the eclipse. Um and also, in case you missed it, I took video of it. It was really cool. It was a really cool experience. There were a lot of people there. It was the day after conference. Uh, pretty much everyone got to go tour the Kirtland Temple and then experience the eclipse. It was really, really, it was a powerful experience. But um, there was there was news about this, how this comet uh, would have been visible during the eclipse. Although, uh, from everything that I read, you'd have to have like a telescope or binoculars to see it during the eclipse. But but whatever. Um, it felt like the eclipse itself was very special, uh, again, because just a month before this happened, the Kirtland Temple was purchased by the church, uh, which felt like impossible, like something that would never happen uh, before the millennium to me, but it did. Um, there, there's just a whole lot going on with the eclipse, but I'm not going to rehash all that. But this was just another thing is that you had this comet that showed up or was visible during the eclipse. So, Anyway, um, and so just yesterday, and I, I, presumably this will be the last event with this uh, comet, Pons Brooks, but yesterday, Sunday, it made its closest approach to Earth. If anything else happens, I'll let you know. Or if you see anything happen with it, let me know, and then I'll share it with everybody. So Pons Brooks uh, has come, and it's now leaving, and the next thing to look forward to is uh Sushinshin Atlas uh the day after the day after Yom Kippur. Um again, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know the days that it's going to be visible. I didn't look that up, but it's going to be around this time. So this this will probably be one of the next things to look forward to when it comes to signs in the heavens. Unless something else happens that surprises us. But 
Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.